The Riddle from the Tales of the Brothers Grimm There was a king's son who had no greater pleasure than to travel, and with no other companion than his faithful servant. During one of their journeys they one day found themselves in a great forest, and knew not where to get shelter for the night. At last they espied a little maiden, and as they drew near to her they saw she was young and fair, so they followed her to a little cottage. The king's son spoke to her and said, Dear child, can I and my servant find accommodation for the night in your little cottage? Uh, yes, said the maiden in a sorrowful tone. You can very easily, but I advise you not to stay, nor even to go in. Why should I not? he asked. The maiden sighed and said, my stepmother carries on a wicked trade. She is not good to strangers. It was evident to the travelers that this was the house of a witch, but as it grew darker every minute they could not go farther, and they had no fear, so they stepped in. As they entered, an old woman who sat in an armchair near the fire turned and looked at the strangers with her red eyes. Good evening, she said in a tone that seemed quite friendly. Lie down there and rest as long as you like. Then she blew up the fire to make the coals burn under a saucepan in which something was boiling. But the daughter cautioned them not to eat or drink anything in the house, for that her stepmother was brewing wicked drinks. So they went to sleep without any supper and slept quite peaceably all night till the next morning. Just as they were about to start, indeed the king's son was already on his horse, the old woman came up to them and said, Wait a moment till I give you some drink for a farewell cup. While she went to fetch it, the prince rode away, and his servant, who sprung hastily into the saddle, was just about to follow him when the wicked witch returned with the drink. Carry this to your master, she exclaimed and at the same moment the bottle burst, and the poison spurted all over the horse. So virulent was the venom that the animal instantly fell dead. The servant ran after his master and related what had happened, but as he did not wish to lose the saddle, he went back to fetch it. When he came to the place where he saw the dead horse lay, he found a raven already feeding upon the carcass. I will take this bird, he said. It will do very well for our dinner today, unless we find something better. So he killed the raven and took it away with him. After this, the king's son and his servant traveled the whole day through the forest, but could find no resting place till evening advanced. And then they came to a kind of inn and entered. They were shown into a small parlor, and the servant gave the bird he had killed to the landlord, telling him to have it roasted for their supper. But the young prince and his servant were in more danger now than while in the witch's hut. They had lighted on a den of murderers and thieves. When it was quite dark, twelve evil-looking men surrounded the house, whose intention it was to get at the foreigners and rob them. However, before commencing their evil operations, they seated themselves at the supper table prepared for the king's son and his servant, and presently they were joined not only by the landlord, but also by the witch herself, for the travelers had wandered back through the wood nearly to the old woman's house. A dish full of soup was first placed on the table in which the bird had been cooked, and they began to eat quite greedily, but scarce had they taken two mouthfuls when they all fell to the ground dead. The raven, in feeding on the poisoned flesh of the horse, was itself poisoned and shared this poison with the robbers. The prince and his servant were thus saved and very glad to have lost their supper. There was now no one left in the house but the daughter of the landlord, who was a truly honest girl, and would take no part in the terrible deeds done in the house. She opened all the doors for the strangers and pointed out to them an accumulation of treasures, but the king's son said she might keep them, 
he would have none of them, and so he rode away with his servant. They had been traveling for many days when they came to a large city in which lived a very proud and beautiful princess. She had made known her determination that she would take for her husband any man who should propose to her a riddle which she could not find out. But if she did find out the answer, then his head would be cut off. Three days was the time allowed for her to try, and she was so clever that she always discovered the meaning of the riddle before the appointed time had expired. Already had nine of these wise men risked their lives to the beautiful princess, and the king's son, who had just arrived in the town, was so struck with her great beauty that he determined to follow their example. So he presented himself before her and propounded his riddle, what is that which never slew anything, and yet slew twelve? The princess was puzzled now. She thought and thought, but she could make nothing of it. Then she studied her riddle book, but all to no purpose. Her wisdom had come to an end. So the princess determined to try some other means, and calling her maid, she told her to hide herself in the stranger's room, for that very likely he might dream and tell the answer of the riddle in his sleep. But the prince's clever servant found out what was going on and laid himself in bed in the room of his master. When the maid came in, he pulled off the cloak in which she had tried to conceal herself and drove her from the room. The next night, the princess sent her chambermaid to try her fortune as a listener, but she was just as unsuccessful, for the servant also pulled off her cloak and drove her out. On the third night, the princess, believing that the master himself was in the bed, came herself to the room. She wore a large, dark gray mantle and thought, as she softly placed herself near him, that she should not be seen. As soon as he closed his eyes, the princess began to question him in the hope that he would talk in his sleep, as many do. Whereas the prince's servant was wide awake and knew very well what he was about, then asked the princess, What is it that never killed anyone? A raven, he answered, who ate the flesh of a dead and poisoned horse, and died in consequence. Again she inquired, What was it that killed twelve? Twelve murderers ate the raven, and were poisoned also, and died. As soon as the princess knew the riddle she wanted to run away, but the servant caught hold of her cloak and held it so tight that she was obliged to leave it behind. On the following morning, the princess made known that she had found out the riddle and sent for the twelve judges to hear her reply to it. But the servant, who was present with his master, requested to be heard first. The princess, he said, would never have found out the riddle if she had not concealed herself in my master's room, where she thought he slept. But I was there instead of him, and when she questioned me about the riddle, I told her all she knows about it, and she supposed I was talking in my sleep. Can you, the judges said, give us some proofs of what you have affirmed? The young man went immediately and fetched the three cloaks and explained to the judges how he had obtained them. As soon as they saw the dark gray mantle which the princess had worn and tried to keep, they said, let this mantle be stuck full of gold and silver so that it can be worn as a wedding cloak when the princess is married. But the princess would not marry her after all. And no wonder. The End